Now we're getting somewhere. Perfect. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Hold on. The sound is coming through the wrong thing. There we go. Perfect. Boom. I can hear you now. Cover? You're all good. I was recording, so it was coming through my headphones. You were but recording just before this? Just a demo vocal. Just writing. Of what? Yeah. Tell me. Get me excited. Oh, it was it's a song me and my friends wrote. Well, see, we were, my friend had signed a pub deal. So we were just like drinking over Zoom. And then I forget what he said, but it reminded me of like Moan and Pumbaa. And it was like, hold me back. And I was like, I feel like I'm that friend at the bar who's like, if I were to see my friend's boyfriend at the bar, like talking to another girl when she's not there, I'd be like, I will fight him. Um, so anyway, the song is like, let's see, <laughs> where, where were we? It's like, this man thinks he can hurt my friend with some random on the weekend. Hold me back, bump, 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 hold me back. Hold my earrings, hold my drink. I'm gonna tell this man what I think. Hold me back. I ain't crazy if I'm spinning facts if he's doing it wrong. I don't hold back when I'm drinking. I don't hold back what I'm thinking. Didn't want to know what I was thinking. He should have been on his best behaving. With all these shots that I'm shooting, all these thoughts that I'm concluding. If this man doesn't want to get a little butt whooping, hold me back. I love that. Thank you. I love it too. And I forgot that we wrote it. And then um, we didn't like put guitar to it because I didn't have a guitar at the time. We were just zooming. But like we wrote the whole thing and then I showed my producer and I was like, can you put guitar to it? And it's really difficult guitar because it's all like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, all walk downs. And I was like, I am only human so he put it together so i was just putting a vocal to it so hopefully we can put it maybe on the album if, if the it, fact if. that it's inspired by timon and pumbaa might be my favorite thing ever i mean i was tipsy so i'm not sure how it came about but i'm almost certain it was like i'm timon and it's like hold me back you hold know? me and, back right and then hold me back pumbaa hold me back and then he's like let me at him let me at him and then pumbaa lets him out anyway so that's the worst is when you tell your friend, because I've been in that scenario, I haven't confronted the person. I've just told my buddy, they're like, hey, your person's here with somebody else and they just don't believe you. And you're like, I'm seeing it with my, what do you mean you don't believe me? I'm seeing it. It's right here. I promise. Yeah, you got to take <laughs> pictures. Now we got, you know, smartphones and proof and stuff. So yeah, but this yeah. is back in my Motorola crazier days, which you probably never even had to use one of those. So yeah. Oh. I, I did. Those were my days too. Uh, my sister got a Motorola Razor and I didn't get anything. So I was a little butt hurt. I got my first cell phone in grade 10 and I didn't use it that much. And then so I stopped using a cell phone until grade 12. Just because you had no use for it? Yeah, like I texting costs money and I was just like, I don't care. And then like you had Facebook Messenger. I don't, I don't, or like MSN. To me, it wasn't like needed now it's needed but you know what i'm saying you i had no plan to go down this road at all but i feel like we are absolutely in the same era and you're gonna make me ask this so i apologize in advance what was your first email address because all of ours were embarrassing mine was <laughs> goblin sharks rule at hotman.com goblin sharks they rule man so that was my first one, yeah. What happened? Why, what, are, what is a goblin shark and why do they rule? A goblin shark is one of the rare sharks that lives in like the dark depths and like the abysses of the ocean. And they're so ugly, I'll find a pick. But like back then I was like, they're like an odd shark and they deserve love too. Um, <laughs> that's just how I am as a human. Um, and they're really ugly. Hold on, I'll get you a picture. Here we go. And I'm, I'm a shark fanatic. That's a goblin Oh, yeah, shark. those are super ugly. Yeah, and they live in, like, you know, the dark, dark, dark the abysses dark of depths. the world. They hide from everything else. Lighting not suck. Yeah, those are terrible looking. Wait, yeah, when did you so realize that it was time to not they're use gar really. goblin sharks are cool? The, when did you have to change your email? When I was 17, <laughs> and I was, like wanting to get into music because when I was 17 I just realized that like I could maybe do music and then 20 was when I was like I'm going all in but yeah no when I was 17 this lady like a PR lady was like I think you need like an email address that's not that so I did what write. happened when you told your family at 17 I want to do music and what changed in those three years between then and 20 to make you say I'm doing it my parents were always like 
yeah, go for it, kid. Like whatever you want, if it's a thing that you can accomplish, sure. Um, what changed is probably my writing abilities and the fact that like I grew up as a person. I think I grew a lot from 17 to 20 and I traveled and everything. Um, and then it was just like, you got to go all in or else you're not going to go anywhere. So what did all in mean for you? Was it quitting school? Was it quitting a job you had? I know you like me worked at restaurants a bunch. So what, what was the moment? All in was like, when people asked me what I am, I'd say I'm a singer songwriter. And I was That's like, cool. I'm, and I put all my money towards it. So I was still in the service industry and everything, but I was like, every everything I made went right into like recording and, and being the best I could be. See, you're super smart because everything I made as a bartender, a restaurant manager, a server went straight back into the restaurant after work because I would drink there and pay for it because I'm an idiot. I mean, I was maybe one of those two people too. I, I was that girl who was like, yo, was there any mistakes? Uh, any beers that you messed up that I could perhaps inhale? No, I was pretty sneaky. I'd let other people pay. Um, that's how that's how I did it. Give no. me your your nightmare serving story. We all have one that that jumps out like I can't believe that happened to me. My nightmare serving story. I don't really get insulted by customers much. Um, I was a really good server. It's like when the kitchen staff is mean to me that I can't handle it when they're like, you worked here for three years. You'd think you'd know this stuff by now. And I'd be like, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> um, craziest thing though is like our town has a, a railroad in it and there's Thomas the tank engine comes through and, and the train brings a lot of children and like everybody from just out of town. So like everyone gets off the train, they all come. They're like, we need to be done in 30 minutes. And so like, there was just like an influx of customers and they all had to be 30 minutes and then they go. No, so that was like, that was my least favorite. I'll never forget my best friend. I got, I was working at a restaurant as a host, hostess, whatever you want to call it. I got him a job his very first day. He's walking through the restaurant, like 30 minutes into his shift. Some lady hands him a plate with a napkin on top and he goes to put it in the back. And it's just a plate full of her kids puke. <laughs> He's like, what did I just walk into? I've picked up a diaper before. That's for sure. Like, I don't understand the audacity. And like, there's some people who just don't clean up after their kids. So you have to like go through like the carpeted area, which is like a broom and a bath. People, but it's customer service. We have this segment that we do on this YouTube channel. And I can't wait to, to find out what your story is called. My first time on the radio. And it's all about the first time you heard your own song on the radio. Was it F-150 or was it something different? And what was going on? The first, I, I feel like there's like a difference between hearing it out of the blue and hearing it when you planned to hear it. So sure. I'll tell my, I'll tell my story of when I heard it out of the blue. Cause I think that's way cooler than like, I agree. Time. So my first time, my first time went a little like this. <laughs> that's anyway, um, continuing. I was driving to my producers, which is in KX country, um, which is my hometown station. And, and it came on, on my hometown. And I was like, holy cow patties. And I like pulled over because I wanted to like videotape. You know how everyone like tapes their first time? That sounds weird too. That does um, sound very weird. Well, first time on the radio. <laughs> yeah, we tape our first time on the radio. On the radio. Yeah. So, it, but it was like pitch blackout. And so I was just like, and I didn't want to cry on camera when nobody was around. So I was like, it's on. Okay, bye. Um, but yeah, it was like a surreal moment. It was just on a back road in the dark and if that's not a cool place to hear your song for the first time on the radio i i don't know what it is so. who's the who's the first person you call that plays on the radio you have your moment do you call mom first who do you call first after that moment happens i didn't call anybody is that weird yes. <laughs> i ooh, maybe i'm weird i posted it on instagram i posted it on my insta story so i told all my followers and then i got to my producer's house and i told them but no, I didn't actually call anybody because my dad had heard it a few times already because he listens to the radio when he's in okay. the shop. And my mom had heard it on our house speaker before. So it was like everybody else had heard it but me. And then so I was just like, this is my moment. To, I don't know. I like celebrating my moments by myself. And the fact that they'd already had that moment, it that makes more sense as to why you didn't call yeah, them. If had they hadn't moment. heard it yet, yeah. Oh no. 
Robin. Like, I froze. There you go. Sorry. Now you're back. I thought I was dead there. Whew. That's all right. Your internet connection is unstable. Well, no heck. That's all right. What were you saying? You'd see, you said they'd had that moment? Yeah. So they'd all had like that moment where they texted me and they're like, you're on the radio. Um, so we, we already had that win together. And then, so this little win was my, my little win that I, I guess I kept to myself. And, and my so it, it was F-150 though. F-150 is the first it song that F-150. anybody's ever heard of you on the, on the radio. Yeah. Had you pitched I, other songs to radio stations or this was the only one you've, you've actually ever sent to radio? I, I've gotten like featured on KX and other stations with, um, another song, but this was like the first song that I've ever gone to country radio with. Um, so it was neat. It was, do you know that the guy, your ex that the truck's written about the whole song is written about, do you know when the first time he heard it was, did he say anything? I don't know when the first time he heard it was like, I'm pretty sure he would have heard it on like Spotify or like checked it out when I released it. But his girlfriend actually posted it they heard it on the highway and they posted it on her story and was like oh can't listen to the highway anymore <laughs> for the whole town to see and i was like oh, petty is as petty does but um they're bitter about it they don't like that they've sort of had this sort of shared spotlight in a way right well to me like nobody knows it's them well, now I guess all her followers know, but only 20 people really knew, like we're in a small town and only his friends really knew who he dated. Um, but yeah, now, now all her followers know. So thank you for the how, publicity. <laughs> how awesome does that feel for you to take something like that and have it be this moment that's vaulted you into this whole different stratosphere in your career? It's so crazy. Cause when I was going through the breakup, it did not feel good at all. And it was really hard. Um, but dang, what, 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 what does Jordan Davis say? If it weren't for the almost maybes. Um, Boom. So I'm very, very happy I got dumped. To anybody who just got dumped, your life's about to get better. <laughs> have you had a bunch of people that reach out to you about this song being like, I have a vehicle, I have a restaurant, I have a, a, a park that is sort of the, your, their version of an F-150? Yeah, a lot of people have been reaching out, like saying what their ex's car is. Like, oh, mine's a Jeep Cherokee. Can you do that version? Or mine's a Chevy. Can you make that version? Um, I have like probably fifty remix requests. But yeah, no, it's it's crazy to see how it's impacted other people. And they're like, this is my whole life. We just broke up, and he drives an F one fifty. And you're writing my story. And a lot of I'm on the first chorus right now, and I can't wait to be on the third chorus which is when you get over the guy. Um, so it's been really cool to see how my heartbreak has impacted people. Be honest with level with me. Was there any hope that even though it's sort of a negative connotation towards F-150s, is there any hope that because you said it so much, they might come to you and say, here's an F-150? I mean, my dad was really hoping because he drives an <laughs> F-150. So he's like, you can have my old one. I'll get the new one. This is great. And I was like, yeah, dad, I'll have the old one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, my song that gets us the new vehicle. I'll take the old truck. You take the new one, right? Yeah, I'm a giver. I'm a giver, <laughs> Greg. Um, but no, uh, I blew up one of their trucks. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's in my music video. Yeah, yeah I, I know. blew up an F-150. So they're they're like mm, they're on the fence right now. They're like mm, maybe not. So yeah, I'm gonna drink water. But maybe one day. Probably one of the coolest music video moments I can remember seeing in a while, by the way. And that was, that was a one take shot, right? Yeah, we had, um, we had one chance when it blew up. So I couldn't like make a face. There had been like a popper test. So I kind of knew what the sound would be. You can look on Instagram for my <laughs> reaction to that. That was a bad word. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was all, yeah, we had 10 minutes to film that. We had one shot. That's badass. Is there a video that you remember sort of standing out in your life growing up that you watched over and over and over and over? Either because you love the song or because it was just badass. I was raised in the country with no internet and no MTV or anything. So I didn't get to grow up on, right? Who am I? I didn't really get to grow up on music videos, but I've just started getting into them. And I really love Halsey's music video for You Should Be Sad um, because she does all these like iconic um, homages to, for homages to 
other females like Lady Gaga and Shania Twain. And I just think she's really pretty. So I loved that music video, but I'm getting into them now. I'm like started to watch them and be like, what is music video? Growing up in the country and being so fish out of water, how many moments in, in your life have you had those I feel behind moments where you guys are talking about this that's on the internet. I don't know what you're talking about. You've seen this show that I haven't seen because I didn't have that on TV. How many moments that you can remember that you just felt sort of fish out of water? Why am I so behind? Or how do you know this and I don't? I felt behind. Oh, sorry. I just sent an email apparently. I felt behind when it came to like being able to put my music out because like YouTube, I feel like everybody had like these fancy cameras and, and good recording. And I had like a webcam on like a desktop computer. And that's the only way I could do YouTube. And I was like, ah, I just, if I had better quality, I could, I could do more and I could be something more. Um, now that I'm older, we got smartphones. I got all the quality I need. So it was growing pains. Sorry, my cat. Anyway, that, what's your cat's name? Her name's Nels. Hi, Nels. Because Nels started blowing up on TikTok too, right? I, I'm trying. Oh my gosh, she deserves fame. See, she like loves it. She keeps jumping up. Hi, Nels. Fame? She usually talks. She's a Bengal, not, so they're chatty. I'm a little camera shy right now. Yeah, so I don't know. How did, tell me about the moment that you knew that TikTok was kind of blending into launching a career. What was the moment where you knew that, okay, something big is happening here, not just a lot of views, but it's getting bigger than just views. Whew. So um, I was on like watching TikToks right at the start of quarantine because the guy I was dating loved TikTok. So I was just like, yeah, this is hilarious. Um, and then my neighbor was just like, Rob's like, you should try putting music on there. And I had never even thought of it. Like I didn't clue in that all these artists that I'm watching are just like blowing up. And I was like, oh, that's nice for them. Um, and I was, it didn't seem like a thing that I could do, but yeah. And then my neighbor was just like, Rob's just like, go for it. Um, and I did. And then she blew up and then F-150 had her own trend, which was everybody saying which, what their F-150 was when they turned their head and the sad part. So yeah, it was, it was just wild. Cause I was like watching it happen to other people. And I was like, there's no way I'm lucky enough that the algorithm picks up my song, but she did. And, and I what was the moment though? Was it, was it 24 hours in where it got a certain amount of views or a week in where you just saw it have a huge jump? Okay. So, okay. The first times I posted like one or two songs and they went like viral, as you say, like got a bunch of likes and then I'd get a spike in the streams and I was like, Whoa, this is cool. Um, and then for F-150, when that trend hit, there was like 1500 videos of people using the sound. And then my streams like skyrocketed for F-150. And I was like, this is not real. I got like 100,000 streams in one day. And Holy I was, there's like 500 people listening at a time. And then the sound or whatever, it got to like 40,000 people using the sound in the trends. And I was like, there's 40,000 videos with my song, which is like showing up to other people. And then it just, I cracked a million streams in like a couple days. It was insane. For somebody yeah. that grew up with no internet, you really used it to your advantage. It's fantastic that that works well, out for you that way. Because like, I never had it. Like, so now that I do have it, I'm like always on it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like when you were deprived of something your whole life and you're like, I finally have it. <laughs> so I use it a lot. Um, it's kind of like Lennon Stella. Do you know her? Yes, absolutely. So she like was, is from Claremont, which is like 20 minutes from me. And then they grew up with like no TV and no internet. And I feel like she's always on socials now. And I'm like, I wonder if it's just cause we were deprived from it for so long that we're like, we got to catch up. We got to be the best at it. Every um, person I know, actually my wife was like not allowed snacks in the house growing up. They just didn't have junk food around. And we, we, our family, we always just had it around. So when she sees me open a bag of chips and just eat a couple, she's like, how do you do that? Because in her <laughs> mind, when there's snacks around, she was never allowed to have them. So it's got like, I, I got to have all the snacks because now they're finally available for me. So that, that's a real thing. When you're deprived of something as a kid, when you can have it, you want all of it. Yeah, it's very, very, very true. And it worked out to my advantage. I mean, I didn't need the internet when I was a kid. Uh, and now you kind of need it for this career. So I'm happy I got deprived of it. I just love it because there are so many now different ways for an artist to get noticed and to have their own platform. And you don't have to sit back 
or go into those writing rooms in Nashville or go into those big meetings and there's 50,000 other people that are doing the same meeting. Now you can kind of control your own destiny in a way in terms of getting signed. And there's all these different avenues for somebody like you to get noticed. And I, I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually insane that it works like that. It, what would like, you say to somebody like you two years ago who hadn't thought about TikTok or putting music on the internet or anything? What would you say to an artist right now that's just sort of in their head and writing good songs and not sure what the move to make is? Honestly, I wish I, I knew. All I know is to like be kind, try your best and be yourself. Um, I think that's, it's so hard now because everyone's making content that you're like, oh, they're doing it. So I got to do this. And they did this. So I'm going to do this. Um, I think just like sticking to yourself and being like, you know what? I like what I'm making. I'm proud of what I'm making. And at the end of the day, that's going to be the difference is that you made something that's so you everyone's going to want to copy you instead of you trying to copy everybody else. That's my favorite thing that, you. that I try to live by. I love that you said that because in my industry too, but you can hear a whole bunch of different radio shows and try and be them or be that. But as long as you can just be you and trust that being you is enough, it's going to work. You would rather have somebody copy you than copy somebody else. Heck yeah. It's very difficult too, to like trust in your own gut, but you got to do it. You got to do it. I'll get you out of here on this. You've been so generous with your time. I just actually have so much fun chatting with you. I didn't realize how long we've been going. So I was like, I have actually another meeting to get into. That's my bad. I've just been having fun. One last question. When it comes to birthday parties, what's more important? This ends a, a debate that we've been having on my radio show. What's more important at a birthday party, the cake or the decorations? I don't really like cake unless it's ice cream cake. So decorations. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just not a dessert person. You just made me lose. And I'm glad that's where we end the interview because. Okay. I... <laughs> well, gotta go. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for all the time. And uh, I can't wait till you can actually travel so we can have you into the studio and, and play some tunes. And I can't wait to hear the one that you were working on actually be finished. So. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, thank you so much for having me, Greg. Have a great day. Have a good one. <laughs>